Welcome to another exciting and informative episode in our virtual lesson. In this short video lesson, I hope you will gain an understanding and absorb some interesting concepts or ideas in science. I'm Sir Francisco de Guzman, your teacher broadcaster from Science Department. And before I start, let me drive you to this introductory video made by Mr. Frank Gregorio, an introduction to weathering. At ngayon, sisimulan na natin ang ating lesson which is the exogenic process. Specifically, pag-aaralan natin ang weathering at erosion. That is why, at the end of the session, masagot natin ang ating two key questions. Number one, what is weathering and erosion? Number two, what are the agents of weathering and erosion? Marahil familiar na sa inyo ang weathering and erosion. Yes, dahil ito ang process na nakapaloob sa rock cycle. Ano nga ba ang weathering? Weathering is the process of disintegration and decomposition of rocks. It is also simply as the breaking down of rocks into smaller particles. Weathering happens every time. Weathering breaks smaller rocks down further into soil, sand, and even tiny particles sediments. May dalawang uri ng weathering. Ang una ay physical at ang ikalawa ay chemical weathering. Speaking of which, kapag sinabi nating physical weathering or tinatawag din itong mechanical weathering, this is the breaking down of rocks without changing its composition. Ibig sabihin, ang isang malaking bato pwedeng magpira-piraso pero hindi kailang mabago ang mineral composition nito. Pero kapag sinabi natin chemical weathering, nagpira-piraso ang bato, but the composition is also changed. So, there are changes in the composition of rocks due to chemical reaction. Kapag sinabi natin mechanical o physical weathering, maraming factors sa paligid or sa mundo ang nagkukos kung paano ito nangyayari. These factors are the pressure, temperature, frost wedging, abrasion, organic activities, human activities, and borrowing animals. First factor under mechanical weathering is pressure. Pressure is the propagation of fractures near the surface of solid rock due to expansion-related release of confining pressure when deeply buried rock is unroofed. Paano naman nakakapekto ang pressure sa pagkasira o pag-weather ng mga bato? Pwede natin ilagay ito sa konteksto ng mundo ay geologically active. Meaning to say, the tectonic plates and even what's beneath the tectonic plates are continuously moving as we speak now. The tectonic plates are bumping or colliding with each other. And this collision is producing so much pressure. So, itong pressure na ito is enough na para ang mga bato na ito ay mag-crack o masira the second one is temperature. As we all know, most materials expand when they are heated and contract when they are cooled. Paano ba nakakapekto ang temperature sa mga bato? The general rule of thumb is kapag mataas ang temperature, the particles or the substances expand. Kapag mababa ang temperature, the tendency of particles or the substances is to contract. Since ang mga bato binubuo ng mga minerals at ang mga minerals ay binubuo ng mga molecules and atoms, pag masyadong mataas ang temperature, the particles expand, the substance expand. Kumbaga, 
lumalawak ang surface na kailangan niyang i-hold. Kapag naman mababa ang temperature, nagko-contract naman sila. So, the continuous expansion and contraction of rocks at large ay pwedeng makasira sa bato. The third one is frost wedging. It is the splitting or breaking up of rocks by the pressure of frozen water in cracks in the rocks. Kukunik ko siya sa temperature. Dahil nga nagkakaroon ng expansion and contraction, pwedeng magkaroon ng crack ang mga bato. At dahil may crack ang mga bato, pwede siyang pasukan ng tubig at kapag ang temperature sa labas ay bumagsak sa freezing point, meaning to say, yung liquid water ay pwede magsolidify at pwede siyang maging ice at pwede nitong i-stretch ang mga bato para sa mas malawak yung crack at later on masira ang bato. The same thing happens when you put a can of soda in your freezer. We all know that soda is mainly water. When water freezes to expands, and actually will burst right through a can. Iyon ang frost wedging. The fourth one is abrasion. It is the rubbing, scoring, or scraping of rocks through friction. Kapag sinabi naman nating abrasion, ito yung pagkakaroon ng friction ng other agents in the environment like water and air into rocks. So unlike the other types of agents, this agent would take a little longer para niya masira o mabago ang, ang physical feature ng bato. Yun hangin, imagine ninyo for thousands of years, naging nahahanginan yung bato so nagbabago yung feature ng bato. Yun tubig, lagi niya natutuluan ng bato, pwede niya rin mabago yung physical features nito. The next one is organic activity. It happens when plants break up rocks with their growing roots or plant acids help dissolve rock. Let's say na may mga plants na tumutubo sa mga bato. And these plants have been growing roots. So yung mga roots na ito, they tend to go into the rocks and then nasisira nito yung bato. Next one is human activities. Under this factor, human being break and move rocks and sediments to build structures. Human activities is very obvious. A lot of human activities, from mining to quarrying, to the smallest activities that we do on the surface of the earth na pwedeng makasira o makapagpaliit sa piraso ng mga bato. Last one is burrowing animals. Animals that burrow underground, such as moles, gophers, or even ants, can also cause physical weathering by loosening and breaking up parts of rocks. Animals also play a role in mechanical weathering. Yung mga mahilig mga alkal na mga hayop tulad ng langgam ay maaaring makapagpabago sa physical feature ng bato. Those are the seven factors under mechanical weathering. Pressure, temperature, frost wedging, abrasion, organic activity, human activities, and last one we have the burrowing animals. Ngayong tapos na tayo sa physical weathering, magtungo naman tayo sa chemical weathering. Under chemical weathering, there are three processes. These are dissolution, hydrolysis, and oxidation. Dissolution happens when rocks or minerals are dissolved by water. Kapag sinabi nating dissolution, malaki ang involvement ng water sa chemical weathering. Hindi lang sa dissolution, but also to the other types of chemical weathering. So, what happens? That our rocks are formed from minerals, and many minerals are soluble in water. Pag sinabi nating soluble, nalulusaw siya sa tubig. Kapag nagkaroon ng crack sa bato at pumasok ang tubig, yun water will react to up some minerals and dissolve them the solution. Next one is hydrolysis. It is the breaking down of rocks by acidic water to produce clay and soluble salts. Sabi nga natin kanina, malaking factor ang water sa chemical weathering. Because in this type of weathering, water roulette ang may kinalaman sa pagbabago ng composition ng bato. Last one is oxidation. It is the breaking down of rocks by oxygen and water. Often given iron-rich rocks, a rusty-colored weather surface. 
Minsan, nakakakita tayo ng mga bato na kinikalawang itsura. Mapula-pula ng kaunti o mabraw ng kaunti. That is because the water reacts with water-rich minerals in the rock. Pag nagkaroon ng reaction ang iron sa oxygen, nagkakaroon ito ng rust product dahil sa combination nito. Those are the three processes under chemical weathering. Dissolution, hydrolysis, and oxidation. Ngayong tapos na tayo sa weathering, punta naman tayo sa erosion. Ano nga ba ang erosion? By definition, erosion is the separation and removal of weathered rocks due to the different agents like water, wind, and ice that causes transportation of the minerals to where they deposited. Ang erosion ay madalas na miminsala sa tuwing napapadalas ang ulan tulad na lamang na nangyari noong dumating ang bagyong Ulysses sa probinsya ng Quilino Province. Ating panoorin muli ang balita galing sa GMA News TV. May matinding soil erosion sa bayan ng Nagtipunan sa Quirino Province dahil sa bagyong Ulysses. Sa kuha ng Municipal Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office o ng MDRRMO, nagkalat ang malalaking tipak ng bato at lupa sa barangay San Pugo. At dahil nasira ang bahagi ng National Road, apektado ang buong komunidad. Ayon sa DSWD, halos limampung mga pamilya o mahigit isang daang mga individual na ang inilika sa Pongo Central School. Sa ngayon, nadadaanan na ang lugar. Nakapasok na rin ang ilang rescuer. Pero ang ilang nagsilikas, ayaw nang bumalik sa lugar na nakitaan ng fissure o bitak sa lupa. Humiling sila na inspeksyonin kung ligtas pa ba itong tirhan. Maging ang posibleng relocation site, dapat din daw matiyak na hindi peligroso. Iyan ang pinsala na maring dulot ng eruption. Kaya tandaan, maging alerto sa oras na may papalapit na sawana, lalo na kung ang inyong lugar o tahanan ay malapit sa danger zone. Upang malaman natin kung kayo may natutunan, maaari nyo nang sagutan sa inyong sagutang papel ang assessment sa Module 5 ng Earth and Life Science. Kung kayo ay may katanungan, maaari kayo magmensahe sa aking Facebook account o mag-email. Ang video lesson na ito ay pwedeng panoorin muli sa ating Facebook page. At dito nagtatapos ang ating aralin sa araw na ito. Salamat Shopee!